Welcome back to Bazooka Kickboxing and MMA. Today's workout, we're going back to shadow boxing, but it's gonna be more shadow kicking. In today's workout, I'm gonna show you three different ways that you can throw your round kick when shadow boxing. It's Bazooka Joe Baltalini. Learning how to throw different round kicks when it comes to shadow boxing is really important because each kick is different. And you have to understand that shadow boxing, you're visualizing a fight. You're using techniques that are gonna be valuable to you when it comes to sparring in your fight. So the key when talking about the different kicks is the recovery position. You wanna make sure you're able to kick and get back to your position right away so you can defend or attack again. If I'm always throwing my round kicks and I'm out of position, I'm never gonna be able to follow up with things, be in a good position to attack again, which to me shows a lack of control, a lack of technique, and it looks really sloppy. So these three ways are gonna give you different ways to be able to play around with them. Remember, sometimes there's knockouts, sometimes it's about placement, other times it's about using your kicks to maybe set up your punches or different level changes in your kicks. So the biggest mistakes I see when people throw their round kicks in shadow boxing is only doing one of the three recovery positions. They're always kicking right through, which to me shows lack of variety in technique and two, not enough control in their hips to be able to kick and return back to their traditional stance. The other thing it, it does is it takes you at a position to defend. Remember, half of fighting is being able to attack. The other half is having good defense, good distance control and good movement. So you have to be able to attack and still be able to defend at the same time. So let's get into the three types of round kicks that you can throw in shadow boxing. The first one, the one we tend to see the most is that kick, the spin through. So I'm gonna push up, be able to kick and come right back to my position, which is nice because I come back fast and I can have my hands ready to go to either an attack to a block or cover some for some punches. Boom, I'm back right away. All right, so that's number one, the kick through. And this one requires the least amount of control because my momentum, my power continues through the technique. The second one is more of that traditional martial arts style, the Taekwondo snap kick. So you're gonna be able to kick, boom, and return back to your position, all right? So you can see the advantage of this one now is I can keep a nice tight angle on my shoulder. I'm never kicking through where my back's in a position for my opponent to attack. So this kick keeps me nice and linear, so I'm not too square. I can kick and return back, all right? So this one's nice if I wanna mix my punches to come back to punch, or maybe I'm kicking and my opponent's coming heavy with the hand pressure. So boom, I can kick and then come back into my defense and defend and catch. The third one is what I call the neck kick, the cut down. So I wanna come down on an angle, attack off the neck, and try to bring my foot straight down. So some people can use this style with the question mark, comes down and they're trying to cut down on the neck, which is nice because a lot of the blocks happen this way. I can catch my round kick, but if the kick comes on this angle cutting down, that's where it's dangerous. So it's a lot about those subtle angles that you can mix in with your kicks. Coming in, boom, attack, foot comes down and I bring my foot right back into that position. So it's all about the recovery position. I don't wanna cut down and stay here too long because if I miss, the pressure can come, I can get caught, all right? So depending on what your opponent's doing, you might wanna mix up those three styles of kicks. Now that we know how to throw our round kicks, let's put together five rounds for you to practice this concept. Round one starts with the kick through, the spin through. Make sure you power through that kick as hard, as fast as you can, but remember, 360 degrees, your foot comes back to the place it launched from, okay? Kick and return. The least amount of time that your back is to your opponent, the better. Speed, powerful. Round two, we're gonna focus on the Taekwondo snap kick, the chamber kick and return. When doing this round, I wanna make sure you keep your lead side forward to be able to kick and come back right to good hand positioning. Okay? Remember, this one is really good for if you wanna mix your kicks with your hands or if you're kicking and you know your opponent's gonna punch and counter back right away. It keeps a nice linear line, good defense, good technique. The third round, we're gonna work the cut down, those question mark kicks that come down on an angle and then return right back. You can power through, but make sure as soon as that foot hits down, you come right back, keep a nice linear stance to be able to block punches. Remember, a good counter to kicks is punches. So a lot of times guys are waiting for you to kick so they can put their straight punches down the middle. You have to have your elbows in position ready to block those after you kick. 
The fourth round is when we're gonna mix in our leg blocking, right? When you play in that kick style fighting game, you have to be able to block with your legs and then counter back. But when doing this round, I want you to mix in the three different types of kicks. So you can block into a spin through, I can lead check into a snap kick, or I can maybe block and come down into a cut down. You change it up. And remember, when you're shadow boxing, it's important you visualize you know, a certain type of fight. Or if you're working your cut downs, you might be thinking what your opponent might be doing in order for you to land that. You have to use your mind creativity when you're shadow boxing, and that's gonna help put the concepts into the bigger picture and how they could work when you're fighting. The fifth round is putting everything together. Once you have mastered all the kicks and now you're blocking well, you want to use your hands. Even though you're kick fighting, the hands are good to one, set up your kicks, right? I might punch guards to get elbows up so I can kick the body. It helps you set up the kick a little bit nicer. But they also act as distractions. If I'm in someone's face throwing my hands, they might think I'm boxing, but in my mind, I'm using it to set up my kicks. Okay, so when you do this round, make sure you punch, block, counter, be first, right? Depending on the style you're going with. My style, I like to attack first, then I block, and then I'll counter back right away. So I'm putting that volume together. Try it out, use your system, your style, and see how you can use these three types of kicks in your shadow boxing.